boarding school, private jets, and a sprawling estate? Princess Anne is known for her charitable work, but she also is incredibly privileged. Keep watching to learn all the ways her life has been insanely lavish. While Princess Diana Spencer's sapphire engagement ring might be one of the most well-known pieces of royal jewelry, Princess Anne's own collection of dedicated rings goes to show just how lavish her life has been. Anne not only has one gorgeous engagement ring, but two, and both feature center stones that are to die for. As noted by Hello, Anne's first engagement ring, given to her by her first husband, Captain Mark Phillips, consists of a stunning center gemstone in a bluish hue, flagged with a diamond on either side. The ring alone is worth over $13,500, according to an engagement ring specialist who spoke to Hello about the jewels. With this ring, I be wed. If one engagement ring wasn't enough, Anne's second ring, given to her by her second and current husband, Sir Timothy Lawrence, is also stunning and oddly similar to her first. The ring is composed of a sapphire and a trio of sparkling gems. Stone estimated that Anne's second engagement ring is worth almost $34,000. If you're a bit of a royal fanatic, then you know that two direct heirs to the British throne — think Prince Charles and Prince William — technically aren't allowed to travel together. While the rule is in place for rather grim purposes, it does bring attention to the ways in which royals travel. Princess Anne, for example, has been known to travel privately, which has landed her in hot water. According to Express, Anne has flown on private jets throughout Europe, and on one particular occasion, her decision to charter a private plane made her the target of some less-than-pleased constituents. In October 2020, Anne used over $22,000 of taxpayer money to fly in a private jet from England to Italy to catch a rugby game between Italy and Scotland's teams. Given that you can snag a plane ticket from one country to the other for about $135, the decision cost Anne some popularity points, and even made her a topic of conversation on the Pod Save the Queen podcast with Daily Mirror royal editor Russell Myers. Education is one of the biggest indicators of wealth and status, and Princess Anne is no exception. Anne was the first child within the royal family to not be educated exclusively at Buckingham Palace, and in 1963, she was sent to the Benenden School, an all-girls boarding school. While some of us may have the impression that boarding school is basically like a fancy prison sentence, with uniforms and a plethora of rules, Anne has remained clear that her days in boarding school were some of the most formative in her life. Anne conducted a rather rare sit-down interview with Vanity Fair to mark her 70th birthday. During the conversation, she shared her perspective on boarding school and the benefits Benenden brought to her life. She's even the president of the school society. She said, I was ready to go to school. I think boarding school has been demonized by some when in fact it's a very important aspect to have available, and many children actually thrive in it. If you think that Buckingham Palace is the only royal residence, think again. The British royal family has a number of estates to call home. Princess Anne, in particular, resides in two locations, St. James Palace in London and her ornate countryside home on the Gatcombe Park estate. As noted by Architectural Digest, Queen Elizabeth purchased the home in Gloucestershire for Anne in 1976, and in the decades since, the estate has served as Anne's primary residence. Of course, her St. James Palace residence is incredibly helpful when the royal is in London, making her commute after appearances and charitable events a bit easier. There's jewelry, and then there's jewelry. For Princess Anne, her life has been adorned with some of the most grand tiaras in British royal history, and they point to just how different her life has been from us commoners. As noted by the court jeweler, Anne has been known to wear a number of different tiaras, but two that are especially elegant are the Cartier Halo Tiara and Princess Andrew's Meander Tiara. Let's start with the tiara from Cartier. The famed jeweler designed the tiara for the Queen Mother, and Anne wore it for the first time when Queen Elizabeth gave it to her on loan. It was a favorite of the princess as a teenager. Princess Andrew's Meander Tiara, another favorite of Anne's, was originally owned by Princess Andrew of Greece and Denmark. It was gifted to Elizabeth for her wedding and passed down to Anne in the 1960s. 
A number of us know what it's like to have food allergies or intolerances, and honestly, it makes life difficult at times when you have to be gluten-free or can't stomach dairy like you once could. Princess Anne also has food specifications, but they point to her lifestyle rather than an allergy or intolerance. Anne reportedly requires her staff members to serve her a specific kind of breakfast. Along with her bowl of fruit each morning, Anne requires a banana that is so ripe it's almost black. While many of us reserve blackened bananas for banana bread and other baking habits, Anne requires her staff to designate the overripe fruit for her morning meal. Why? We'll let former royal chef Darren McGrady answer that. He told the Today Show, she almost always preferred the bananas almost black, overripe, because they digested easier. It's fair to say that royals and fashion go hand in hand. Many royal family members are known for their opulent wedding looks, their statement handbags, and their dazzling formal ensembles. Princess Anne is not only known for her couture, she is also a dedicated shopper who has made a habit of supporting local businesses while searching for her favorite designer pieces. As noted by Hello, Anne has made it a point to shop small where she can, and has been known to frequent the boutique stores in the village of Horsley, located close to her home on the Gatcombe Park estate. Hello got to chat with Sophie Martin, the manager of the boutique Shibumi, who shared what Anne is like as a customer, saying, She chose to shop with us, which is really lovely. We're local to her, about 15 minutes or so away. She bought most of her outfits at the end of 2019 with a view to wear them in 2020, and she's chosen to wear them now. We love a lady who knows how to shop, and the fact she supports local businesses is even better. We've already established that Princess Anne has a thing for shopping, but it's also thanks to her lavish lifestyle that she transformed into a style icon. Anne has been known for her head-turning ensembles, and as she emerged on the scene in the 1970s, she really knew how to dress and grab the attention of the public through her outfits. Anne embraced 1970s fashion with unapologetic fervor, with her hemlines and silhouettes transforming the young princess from an up-and-coming royal to a bona fide star. The Royal Highness, Princess Anne. Looks such as her 1968 double-breasted yellow dress and coat ensemble, or her turquoise dress that turned heads in 1969, solidified her as a royal with a knack for high fashion. As she grew up in the public eye and found a style that worked for her, Anne became known for her equestrian-inspired looks, and, of course, the sporty sunglasses seen on her person on a regular basis. While her bold looks of the 1970s and 1980s may have calmed down with time, it's safe to say that Anne's access to designers certainly helped her transform into a style icon for the ages. Now let's discuss Princess Anne's wedding. As Queen Elizabeth's only daughter and the first of her children to get married, Anne's wedding was an opulent affair. As Vogue noted, 2,000 people packed into Westminster Abbey to watch Anne and Captain Mark Phillips tie the knot, and thousands of spectators filled the streets to get a glimpse of the bride. It's estimated that 500 million people watched on television as Anne became the first young royal of her generation to get married. I pronounce the day be man and wife. Vogue noted some of the important details of the day, such as Anne's choice of tiara and the intricate floral embroidery present on her veil. Her wedding ring was made from the royal family's historic Welsh gold, which is often used to make the royal wedding bands. All in all, it was an event that certainly stood out to the public and, undoubtedly, to Anne herself. While the marriage didn't last, the impact of the day certainly did. Does anything say lavish more than equestrianism? We don't really think so, and it should not come as a surprise that one of Princess Anne's most beloved hobbies is horseback riding. Not just casual pony trots around her property, either but bad-to-the-bone equestrianism that took her to a variety of competitions. Anne's first pony, William, was gifted to her at an early age. At just 11 years old, she was competing in equestrian events, gaining public attention for her riding capabilities. In 1971, Anne went as far as winning the European Eventing Championships and became the first member of the royal family to bring home a European gold medal. If that wasn't enough, Anne was named the BBC's Sports Personality of the Year. 
Anne's proven abilities as an equestrian took her all the way to the Olympics. But due to a couple of competition setbacks, her hopes of taking home a medal were dashed. But fear not, the princess's skills were later rewarded with both individual and team silver medals at the 1975 championships. Life as a royal seems quite unique, and when we think about what we would do if ever given the chance to step into Princess Anne's shoes for a day, one of our first thoughts is taking advantage of the royal chefs. If adulthood has taught us anything, it's that cooking every single meal gets tedious. So why wouldn't we jump at the opportunity to have anything we wanted cooked at our demand? But despite the presence of royal chefs, Anne doesn't indulge in one practice. Lunch. As she told Vanity Fair, Anne often skips the meal or has a, quote, quick luncheon if it's an aspect of an event. She told the publication, I think during the day, eating's not really an issue. We're not entirely sure how Anne has the stamina to accomplish everything she does, but clearly, she makes it work. Because she was named the hardest working royal in 2021. As noted by the Daily Mail, Anne narrowly beat her brother and heir to the British throne, Prince Charles, with the number of official engagements she held. In 2021 alone, Anne attended 387 engagements, whereas Charles attended 385. Few of us would have predicted that working from home would become the norm, but here we are, years into the COVID-19 pandemic, and remote work definitely seems to be the foreseeable future. It wasn't just those of us who work in the common sphere who were impacted either. Princess Anne has largely worked from home too, and due to video calls and Zoom appearances, we got to see a glimpse of her home office. Good morning, at Windsor. While we mentioned earlier that her home at the Gatcombe Park estate is rather elegant, her office serves as yet another reminder that the life of a royal has its perks. Anne's office has a variety of decorative items. Her glass cabinet housing animal and bird statues, for instance, was caught on screen, as were a number of impressive paintings. Like many of ours, Anne's office also features framed photos of her family members, pictures from her daughter's wedding, for instance as well as a formal portrait of her family. Perhaps the most ornate piece that caught the attention of the public is the gold-accented wall mirror that looks straight out of Buckingham Palace. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more list videos about the British royal family are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.